Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with the Online Security, and we are back with another Cert Master Lab for Security Plus 701. This is actually the last lab in this series. I hope you have been enjoying this series as much as I have. I've had a lot of fun getting through all this content, getting through all this material. Hopefully you've been taking notes. Please don't go through these videos without taking notes. Please don't go through these videos without the intention of studying what you're doing. Please do not go through these videos one time and think that you have mastered some type of skill. That is not a thing. It's not realistic. You will have to go through these videos multiple times in order to become proficient with the tools and skills and topics that we're talking about. All right. So do not one and done a video. If you have questions, just throw them out here. Ask them on the YouTube channel. Throw them in the comment section. Join us on Cyber Thursday for all the students and classes. You have Cyber Thursdays. You have our study hall sessions over the weekends and you have your classes that you can talk to us in bring up the questions please do not keep questions to yourself you're not helping anyone especially yourself all right if you let's go ahead and jump right into this this is going to be a challenge lab all right so we're going to be going through a bunch of different scenarios you can go ahead and read what's going on we're pretty much conducting an investigation this is a, these are our objectives right please pause the video make sure you understand what's going on i'm going to get right to it now, the first thing we're going to do is start the investigation. We're on a tool called Security Onion. What they want us to do is open up the traffic.pcat file with Wireshark. So I'm just going to double click this. Oh, looks like my machine is a little buggy. That's OK. So I'm just going to be patient with it. To open up Wireshark, we're just going to double click this pcat file and it should op open up with Wireshark. OK, and once that's opened up, Looks like I have two versions of Wireshark opened up right now. I'm going to close one of them out. Now we just want to analyze the packets in this file, right? We don't really know what is going on right now. We just know that there's an investigation that needs to be done, right? So I'm just going to go one by one through these packets to see what's coming up. Right now I see internal traffic with 10.10.1.1 .10 and 10.10.1.55. Okay, that, that doesn't look abnormal to me as of right now. So I'm just going to keep up. As I was scrolling down, I see a public IP address of 75.30.5.55. Right, let's look at some more information about that. We're gonna drop this pane down right here. We can see that the, the source IP is, is one of our systems. It's an internal IP. The destination IP is a is a public IP. Okay, and we're sending some type of data over there. Uh, why do we say that? Because we're using the push flag. Push flag is what we use to send data. All right, and we're just sending data to that system over port 1337. Now that is a little abnormal to me, right? We're sending data, right? I'm just gonna keep going down and I'm looking at this line right here to see what packets are being used. All the packets that are being used, I can see them right here in this pane. So I'm gonna move over to the left and just see what's going on. And then it stops for a while. I don't see the, the 75 IP anymore. And then it comes back. It stops for a while. Then it comes back. And it's still using the point 1337. And if you look at the traffic down here about this port, we can see that some information is being sent over. I'm not sure what type of information this is. It looks like someone's email address at google.com all right that doesn't look like good stuff right okay so cool we did that i think we got i'm gonna make a note of it on my side of this ip address looks like we're sending oh somebody's name their sex their gen yeah their sex gender this might be female all right yeah that's definitely some um, pii information in here all right we're gonna go to the next section all right, now we're gonna go to Windows Server 2019 machine. It wants us to display and document the IPv4 address. We know how to do that. We're gonna open up a command prompt and just type IP config. Okay, we see our IP address 10.10.1.5. That looks like the same IP address from our security onion tool. Let's see. And we can see 10.10.1.5. Yes, that was the same one. I'm going to go back over to the Windows Server IP or to the Windows Server 10.10.1.5. All right. We got the IP address. So that is the victim in this case. Display the active connection and ports on which the computer is listening. We're going to use netstat for that. Netstat. 
Ah, and we have that same connection right here. Sweet. All right, so we're, we're on the right track. This is the IP address that we saw in the packet capture. That is the destination port that it was using. We are on the right track. So now it's time to check for unauthorized accounts. Huh, let's just run net user. I think it's net user without an S. And we have, ooh, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Look at this administrator account that has the number one selected. Ha, ah, we're on to something. All right, cool. Check Checking for an anomalous processes. There are a few ways we can check for anomalous processes, bad processes. We can use the task list command right here on the command prompt to do it and then give it this SVC switch. Um, I think I'm going to, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Wintools.exe. Look at that. They got a, a number in there thinking they can trick us. I'm just going to scroll up. I mean, I think that's the guy that we're looking for. I think that's the guy that we're looking for. I'm going to use another tool. I'm going to use the sys internal tool. Go to, I want to use that proc. Explore 64. I'm going to double click that, hit accept. Once again, I'm using this tool right here, Proc Explorer 64. Let's see if we can see the Win Tools guy over here as well. There you go. Ha 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 ha. All right, there you go. All right, so let's keep going. All right, we found that process. All right, which of the following is the attacker's IP? It's one of these 75s, I can't remember. Let's go back over here. Actually, I have it written down as 75.30.5, this guy. All right, what is the destination port? 1337. All right, we're on the right track, y'all. Now let's go do some log analysis. We're still on the Windows server. It says examine the Windows server security logs to determine if any unauthorized local accounts were created. All right, we have to go into the event viewer. We're going to go to the start button and type event viewer. Open up the event viewer application. They gave us an alley -oop by giving us an ID number to look for. I'm going to go to Windows logs here. I'm going to go to security logs and I'm going to filter the current logs for event ID 4720. I don't get anything. Okay. We know that they created a user though. Uh, if no user creations are found, be sure to check for any save logs. Let's go over here to save logs. What is in here? Let's do the same filter. Filter for 4720. Oh, we got one thing in here. Let's get some details about this guy. Oh, ho, 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 look at what we got here. <laughs> we on to something, we're on to something, we're on to something. All right, cool. So that guy's in here, it says, document your findings. Yes, we see you, we see you, we see you, we're on to you. All right, let's go. Let's go compare some results. We're going to switch back to Security Onion. Select one of the packets that shows the IP address of 10.10.1.5 and the destination address. Um, let's just select this one right here. This is the source 10.10.1.5, destination 75.30.5.55. All right, now examine the TCP stream to see what was sent. Too easy. All right, we can just right click this and go to follow the TCP stream. Whoa, this is what we were looking at that was broken up. Okay, we got Curtis, his sex, mail, address. Whoa, email address, phone number. And these are all neatly typed in, too. These are all neatly typed in. All right, cool. That's some PII right there. Examine the TCP stream to determine the type of data was sent from. Determine the type of data that was sent from source to destination. Gotcha. Retrieve the IP address of the security onion VM and compare it to the PCAP. Okay, let's get our IP address. Do they have command prompt on here? Let's open up. The terminal. I'm going to do ifconfig. Its IP address is going to be, I believe it's going to be ETH0. It's a lot of IPs here. All right? It's going to be ENS32, this ether. 10.10.1.55. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. We're going to the knowledge check. What is the new account that was created? The administrator with the one. Which of the following based on the exploit is the malware type? Uh, 
don't have enough information for it to be root kit. Not enough information for it to be these. I'm gonna go with the key logger, right? Because that information was neatly typed out. So maybe they are capturing some keystrokes, right? A, a spyware, I should say. All right, so we're right so far. Let's go review your notes to determine the data classification of the data. The data classification of the data I was sent. That looks like PII to me. Review your notes regarding the running application services to determine the data classification and data sent. We already saw it. Uh, we can go back and get this PID. That's fine. Which of the following is the name of the malware? You. We found you. Which of the following is the data classification that is being exfiltrated? PII. Sweet, sweet. It's not going to be PHI. PHI is, uh, that's health records, PCI, that's credit card stuff. Right. Mitigating the unauthorized account. Disable the unauthorized user account. All right, we have to go back to the Windows machine to do that. So I'm gonna click this guy and then I'm gonna come back over here. So we have to come over here. Let's right click this start button. Let's go to computer management. All right, you see where it says local users and groups. We're gonna go into users. Here's the administrator account. Right click that guy. Right click the right administrator account, the one with the number one in it. We're gonna right click that guy, go to properties and disable. That's it. It should be disabled. Let's check our work. Come on, give it to us, 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 give it to us. Come on. There we go. Let's get it. Next, disable and end the malicious application from running. There are a few ways we can do that. We can just go into this process and right click that guy and kill the process. I'm just gonna kill, well, I'm just gonna kill the process. All right, cool, it's done. Hopefully that worked. Come on, come on, come on, come on, give it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now let's check which of the following is the Windows application that can be used to determine if the exploit resurfaces. Task manager, we can always go back into the task manager. Do I have it open here? No, if I just right click this start menu, open up task manager, we can see the same thing over here that we saw over here. So if it comes back, that's where we can check it out. Check knowledge, good, let's go. Verify that the unauthorized user has been deleted. Uh, let's use PowerShell. I'm gonna right click here. I'm gonna open up PowerShell as administrator. And let's go get local user, the name. Don't forget the one admin, uh, got me, administrator dot enable. I forgot to do this right here. All right, it's not there, okay, it's not enabled. All right, what's next? Verify that the malicious application was terminated. All right, let's use PowerShell again. We're gonna use the git process commandlet and we're gonna look for back, uh, what was the name of that guy? Dang, I didn't, I didn't take a note of it. Um, I didn't take a note of what it was uh, and we deleted it, right? Um, let me see. Let's see what was the name of it. There we go. Win tools with a zero at the first O. All right, can't find that process. Cool. Verify that the malicious packet transmit has stopped. All right, we got to go back to security onion for that. And we got to launch Wireshark. Where's Wireshark? Yeah, they don't have Wireshark over here. All right. Um, uh, I don't think we can launch another Wireshark session. That's weird. Let me see if I do this. All right, cool. I just launched Wireshark from the terminal. Just type in Wireshark at the terminal 
and it should execute this. I'm gonna go ahead and capture traffic on ENS32. And I'm gonna filter for that IP address, IP.ADDR equals equals 75.30.5.55. We're not getting anything. Good, 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 good. Okay, boom. Next. All right. Uh, sweet. Let's go ahead and submit our score. Let's see what we get. All right, y'all. So that was pretty straightforward. We went through that process of identifying what was actually happening. We scored, we passed. We looked at Wireshark to look to analyze the malicious traffic going back and forth. We saw what ticked me off specifically was that public IP address after all the private IP communication was going on. Right. And then that port number that it was using 1337, that was pretty abnormal. You know, I'm expecting a 443 or, or some one of the standard ports. From there, we also saw the active session. And when we went to the Windows machine, when we ran NetStat, we could see the active session and we confirmed our findings by finding that malicious administrator user and that malicious Windows Win Tools application that was running. We stopped the application, we disabled the user. Honestly, we should have deleted the user, but they just wanted us to disable it. And we confirmed that the program was not running anymore. We confirmed that the the account was not enabled and we confirmed that the traffic going through Wireshark was not uh, relaying anymore. We were not communicating with that device anymore. Something else we could have did was block that IP address at our firewall, right? Definitely block that IP address at our firewall so we can block that connection from being reestablished. That is it, y'all. If you had as much fun as I did, please don't forget to smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe, tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend at O-Line Security. We are learning the fundamentals to make you a better professional, not just a security professional, but a professional in the information security world, information technology world, and especially the cyber security world. If you would like to go over all the fundamentals to make yourself more marketable so you can leverage real world skills that are solving real world problems, Go to olinesecurity.com and register for our security fundamentals course. We have a bunch of other courses on there. The main academy that we have for people with little to no experience is the Security Fundamentals Academy. If you want to get into Splunk, if you want to get into vulnerability engineering, we have courses there for you as well. But if you have no experience, you're trying to build that experience, you're, you're looking for guidance, you're looking for mentorship, you need help not just breaking into the field, but help to learn the real skill that employers are looking for, olinesecurity.com and check out our security fundamentals academy i will see you all next time peace